Formula One, often referred to as F1, is in a league of its own when it comes to motorsports. While there are other incredibly challenging racing series out there, Formula One stands out as the pinnacle of them all. It pushes both drivers and cars to the absolute limit, all while hurtling around tight corners at 180 miles per hour on the narrow streets of Monaco. The constant demands on F1 drivers aren't just from their teams or engineers communicating through radio comms, they also come from the intricate piece of technology known as the F1 steering wheel. Gone are the days of the big rounded wooden steering wheels from the 1950s. Today's F1 steering wheels are a small yet highly sophisticated piece of equipment made from expensive carbon fiber. Hidden behind the car's halo and deep within its tub, F1 drivers have access to more than two dozen buttons, knobs, rotary dials, menus, displays and LEDs on their steering wheels. This is all while they battle to keep their competitors at bay and secure championship points. You might wonder, what's so special about an F1 steering wheel when my modern car has plenty of buttons and knobs too? The complexity lies in the details which we'll demystify here. Trust me, at the end of this video, you'll know exactly how a modern F1 steering wheel operates, so make sure to watch till the end. Let's get into it. We start off with the Strat settings. Every Formula One race is unique, with its own set of challenges and conditions. To navigate these complexities, F1 drivers and their teams develop numerous strategies. They use rotary knob strategy settings on the steering wheel to address various scenarios, such as managing power unit issues, adapting to weather conditions, and responding to unexpected events like tire punctures or seagull invasions. Next up, we have the MGUK settings. F1 cars' powertrains are incredibly complex due to the sport's hybrid era. Cars can control specific engine calibration maps through a rotary knob on the steering wheel. These maps cover various power levels, including wet weather conditions, qualifying, race mode, low fuel, and more. Sick, right? Next up, we have the menu. The menu on the steering wheel allows the driver to access and adjust almost all of the car's systems. They can browse through telemetry data and make critical decisions during the race. Just imagine driving at 180 miles per hour and browsing through some data. Next up, a very straightforward button, Accept button. The Accept button is like an Enter key, allowing the driver to confirm changes or settings made through the menu or other controls on the fly. Simple. Next up, we have the Mark button. Drivers can mark specific points on the car's telemetry recording when encountering issues on the track. This information is valuable for post-race discussions with the engineers to focus and concentrate on the issues they might have seen on the recordings to get the best performance out of the car. Now we find ourselves at the Differential Balance. The Differential Balance can be adjusted via a scroll knob to control entry, mid-corner and exit settings. This fine-tuning helps the driver find the right balance for each corner. And next up, we have the twin of the differential balance, the brake balance. Similar to the differential balance, the brake balance can be adjusted through a scroll knob, enabling drivers to fine-tune their braking performance during the race. Then we have the energy recovery. Referred to as harvest in some cases, this function allows the driver to recover energy generated during braking and store it in the car's hybrid system for later use. Well, that is what I call technology. The next button is correlated to one of the, if not the most exciting part of the race, the race start. The race start button sets a speed limiter to ensure a perfect start from the grid. It's like launch control but relies less on the car's electronics, just like a rocket taking off. A very boring but necessary is the neutral button. Formula One cars also have a neutral setting just like normal vehicles. Next up, we face a button that helps drivers avoid penalties but still some manage to get a penalty. We're of course talking about the pit lane speed button. Given that pit crews consist of humans who are, let's just say, fragile in their construction, you don't really want race cars coming into the pits at 200 miles per hour. That's a recipe for disaster. 
Instead, F1 rules set maximum pit lane speed at 50.5 miles per hour. There's a button that limits the car's speed as it enters the pit lane so the driver doesn't have to worry about delicately balancing the right foot on the throttle pedal to maintain that specific speed. Next up, the Pit Confirm button. Drivers can manually confirm their pit stops after receiving instructions through radio comms and visual cues from the pit wall. You know, the common box, box, box. That one, yes. Next up, we all love the radio button. The radio button is essential for communication between the driver and the team. What was that? It hit me. I gave him plenty of speed. It's how we get to hear iconic moments like Lewis Hamilton complaining about his tyres or Kimi Raikkonen's famous leave me alone comment. Just leave me alone, I know what you Drink button. F1 drivers can lose up to five to seven pounds of water during a race. The drink button activates a system that pumps fluid directly into the driver's mouth, helping them stay hydrated. Then we have the overtake button. The overtake button provides a temporary boost in engine and hybrid power, enabling the driver to pass a competitor. It's essentially push to pass in F1. Then we have the famous button, the DRS button. Subscribe if you like our content. DRS or drag reduction system is a semi-active rear diffuser that reduces aerodynamic drag. Drivers can activate it when within one second of the car in front, and it provides a speed boost, typically 6 to 10 miles per hour, depending on the track. In addition to these main controls, there are often other buttons, knobs, and settings customized for individual drivers, teams, or specific race weekends. Beyond the buttons and controls, F1 steering wheels feature other components, including paddles. In addition to gear-shifting paddles, F1 steering wheels often have top, middle and lower paddles with various functions related to strategy, transmission and more. Moreover, we have handles. Drivers grip these handles to steer the car at high speeds. Each handle is custom-molded to fit the driver's hands, with teams using different rubber compounds. Then we have the Quick Release Hub. This feature allows for rapid entry and exit from the car's cockpit, crucial in emergencies like accidents or fires. Next up, we have the display. F1 steering wheels incorporate a mini screen that displays telemetry, gear information, lap times and other data. The display can be located on the wheel or the car's dash, depending on driver and team preferences. And the one we all know and see on television, RPM indicator LEDs. LED indicator lights inform the driver when it's time to shift gears. These indicators can be customized with different colors to denote specific RPM ranges and are located on the wheel or the dashboard. In the world of Formula One, the steering wheel is not just a simple control device. It's a cockpit of complex functions and data, giving drivers the tools they need to perform at their best in the world's most prestigious racing series. Now you know exactly what a Formula One steering wheel contains. We hope you enjoyed this informative journey into the heart of F1 technology. Thank you for joining us on this adventure through the realm of Formula One. Subscribe to our channel and let's continue to explore the fascinating world of Formula One together.